All right, this lead code question is called factorial trailing zeros. It says given an integer n, return the number of trailing zeros in n factorial. So for the first example, if the input is three, our output should be zero because three factorial is six and six has no zeros at the end. But for example two, if the input is five, we should return one because five factorial is 120 and 120 has one zero at the end. Then it says your solution should be in logarithmic time complexity. All right, so what is a factorial? A factorial is what you get when you multiply every number from one through that number. So the factorial of five is one times two times three times four times five. All right, so what is the factorial of five? The factorial of five is 120. So you might be thinking, well, if I have 120, why don't I just count the number of tens there are in it? Well, you can probably spot the problem with that right off the bat. If you look at its factors, one, two, three, four, five, the number 10 doesn't appear anywhere there. But how else can you get to the number 10? You can get to the number 10 by taking two and multiplying that by five. So now we've broken this down into something a little simpler. We could count the number of twos maybe, or maybe we can count the number of fives. The solution is to count the number of fives, and I'll show you why. So on the number 120, we only have 10 appearing once, which is two times five, and we can narrow that down by just counting the number of fives. But why not the number of twos? Let me show you that. So let's re-multiply that by six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Let's say we're looking at a factorial of five still. How many twos are there between two and five? Well, we have one here, like we said before, but we also have two twos in here. So if we wanted to count the number of twos, that would be three, one, two, and three. That doesn't really help us. Now let's say we're trying to get the factorial of 10. What is the factorial of 10? It's 3,628,800. So we have two zeros. Back to our example above, if we're looking at the number of twos before we get to 10, We'd have one here, two here, one here, and three here. That would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven twos. That doesn't help us out at all when trying to figure out how many zeros there are. We need to somehow get to only two zeros. So let's look at the number five. We have one five in this and one five in this. That gets us the two we need. So we should just count the number of fives. All right, so you might be thinking that we can just take our n, in this case 10, and divide it by five to figure out the number of fives that we have. So 10 divided by five is two. That seems to work. We have two zeros at the end of that one. And let's pretend for a second that we're only looking for the factorial of five. Five divided by five is one, which seems to correspond with the number of zeros because that would be 120. But what if we were trying to look for the factorial of 25? Using that logic of just dividing the number by five, we would get 25 divided by five, which would give us five. But how many zeros are actually in this? We have one here, five times one. Another one here, five times two, five times three, five times four. And here we have five times five. So how many fives do we actually have? 
one, two, three, four, five, six. Not the five we'd get if we just divided it by five. So what we really need to do is we need to take our n. So remember our n in this case is 25. We need to divide that by five, yes, that would give us five. But whatever number we have remaining, we then need to divide that by five. So five divided by five is one. That would give us the six fives we need. And remember that takes care of the case like this, where even our factors need to be broken down by fives. All right, so let's get to the code. What lead code has given us is a function called trailing zeros, which takes in n. n is the factorial that we want to find the number of zeros for. So the solution will be short. It'll be let number of fives equal zero. At the end, we'll just return number of fives. But now we have to increment it every time we get to a number five. So we'll say while n is greater than or equal to five, what do we need to do? We need to divide that number by five and add that to our variable. So number of fives plus or equals math.floor n divided by five. So in this case, our n is 10. So when you divide that by five, our number of fives would be two. But then we also have to say n equals math.floor n divided by five. This takes care of the cases where our factorials also have multiple fives in them. So this will just keep repeating until they're completely broken down. And at the very end, we'll just return our number of fives. So let's run the code and see how we did. Accepted, looks good. All right, so our solution was faster than about 51% of other JavaScript submissions. As usual, the code and written explanation are linked down below. If you liked the video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It helps out a lot. See you next time.